can ask. Okay, so welcome to lesson 10, where we look at optical phenomenon caused by refraction. And the one that we're gonna talk a bit about today that is quite cool in terms of my opinion is that apparent depth. If you've ever stuck some object in water, a pencil, your finger, uh, a cord or what have you at the bottom of like a bowl of water, a glass of water, the apparent depth of that object changes based on refraction as a result of light going from air, which is a quick medium, into something like water, which is a slower medium. So uh, the definition of apparent depth reads the uh, depth that an object appears to be due to refraction of light. So what happens when we stick an object in? So well, light from the submerged object travels from water to air. And if you recall, when it goes from a slower to a quicker medium, the light is bent away from the, uh, away from that, oh boy, the that shows the apparent depth of an object as opposed to its real depth, the normal. There we go. So this is why when something is, or someone is standing in water, their legs appear shorter. It creates a virtual image which appears to be closer to the surface of the water than the object actually is. So again, this creates that virtual image with those virtual rays, and the apparent depth is different. The flattened sun is when the sun is near the horizon, the sun appears to be what's called flattened. Uh, and this happens as a result of light from the bottom of the sun refracting more so the, than the light from the top of the sun. Air is at the top of the Earth's surface is more dense uh, than the air at the top of the atmosphere. So therefore, there's a greater bending of the sun's rays. And when rays are projected backwards, that virtual image of the sun appears flat. So again, I'm just breezing over some of these concepts and ideas because you'll be able to fill these in on your own notes. And if you have questions afterwards, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, but I just want to get you the un general understanding of what each of those um, changes as a result of refractive surface or what have you. Uh, so the next one we'll talk about is a mirage. This is the appearance of water on a pavement. This is a cool one because it's a virtual image that forms as a result of refraction uh, as well as total internal reflection of the Earth's atmosphere. Cooler air up top and warmer air on the bottom. Usually, if you've ever seen it in, in the middle of summer uh, on really hot asphalt roads, they've absorbed a lot of heat and energy. So the air closer to the asphalt is warmer than the air above the asphalt. So cooler air and warmer air creates different index of refractions. And as a result of that difference of index of refractions, we have a slower to medium, uh, slower and uh, faster speed medium and that creates refraction. But on top of that refraction, we also have total internal reflection. As that light travels from the cool air to the warm air, it bends away from the normal until total internal refraction occurs. Now that light ray travels up, back up after that reflection into the, from warm into cool air, and therefore the air is now refracted towards the normal. So that light reaches your eyes after being refracted twice, as well as in internally reflected once. This creates that virtual image on the highway. Shimmering is a cool one as well that happens on water surfaces, uh, specifically when the sun has set and the moon is out. Uh, as at night the air above lakes is warmer than the air from uh, the water surface, so that colder air light travels more slowly. The warmer layer light will travel towards the normal, and in the warmest layer total internal reflection occurs. So the difference between uh, this is that like that or that leads to the difference in bending results in multiple virtual images of the moon along the water surfaces or that shimmering effect. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is rainbows. This happens as a result of what's called dispersion, separation of white light into color of the visible spectrum. This dispersion occurs as a result of when light is basically trapped within that water droplet and that dispersion happens as a result of refraction as well as total internal reflection. So it happens in three stages or in three steps. With regards to refraction, the light moves into the water droplet from air into water, causing what's called dispersion. We then have that total internal reflection when light hits the back of the droplet because it's at that, it's at that critical angle. And then that refraction as the light moves from the water out of the air after being totally internally reflected 
and then it, it forms that prism structure as a result of moving out of that raindrop from water to air. So the only time you're ever going to see a rainbow is if the sun is behind you due to the nature of how total internal reflection needs to work as well as that refraction. And then you go on to fill in this chart with the notes uh, or with the textbook pages that are outlined in the weekly planner. Uh, other than that, that's it. I that's all I have for this lesson. Uh, if you have questions, you know where to find me.